Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Joe. Welcome back to SNES's Life. This is the PS2 and U $100 challenge. We're doing update number one. Uh, if you're looking at this, you are going to be aware that I don't have great cameras. I'm not a YouTube channel, really. But a couple people were like, hey, you should do a different uh, setup than using your streaming setup because it doesn't look great. So I'm going to subject you to this. Get ready. <laughs> but... So last time, uh, we were at a budget of $65. We got our console, Thievius Raccoonus, and a Game Boy Advance to sell. I spent $5, got a battery cover for that Game Boy Advance, sold it for $65. After shipping, that's a gain of $60, putting the budget up to $120. Now, I told you I don't have retro stores in my town, but I do have pawn shops, and then I have pawn shops kind of around me. So the first place I went, is I went to the shop about 40 minutes to the west of me. They have a pawn shop there that usually doesn't have much. And they actually have a retro game store. Now, I went in there. You can't haggle with the guy. He's a game shop. He's not going to make you deals. But he does have good stock, and he keeps it, makes sure that what he puts out is pretty good shape. So, I went over there, hit the pawn shop. I bought this pink DS Lite from the pawn shop there for $30. They had this and a white one. The white one was 40 bucks. Uh, this one was 30, I guess maybe they thought because it was pink, it wouldn't sell. But it came with a bag and some games. And so I bought that for $30 because I was like, that's gonna end up, you know, making me some money and that'll help. And then I went to the shop and I picked up three games. So the first game, Devil May Cry, $10. An excellent, excellent third person action game. Uh, pretty hard to beat that. This is CIB. Discs in super good shape. Honestly, I've never actually played the Devil May Cry series, <laughs> like any of them that I remember. But I know they're, uh, you know, pretty well loved. Whether whether they're still good today is a debate, but, I mean, the game looks great anyway. Second up, Black. FPS, Destructible Environments. Again, beautiful game. CIB with the manual. Hard to complain about that. Then finally we got True Crime Streets of LA. This is the only one that I bought from him that was not CIB. But that's okay. It's again another awesome third person action game a la GTA essentially. You know, is, is that true? Is it GTA? That's... I mean, everything gets labeled as a GTA clone when it's a third-person action game where it's driving cars and shooting people and doing, you know, things like that. I remember the, the Streets of LA and Streets of New York kind of had, like, a a real issue, too, because, you know, the characters are supposed to be cops, and so the police departments were like, we don't endorse this, like, this in no way represents the police departments. Um, but that was 30 bucks basically spent there. So $60 down in the budget brings us down to 60 then i put that ds online i sold it for 65 dollars it cost about 10 dollars in shipping for a gain of 55 puts my budget back up to 115 awesome the next place i went was the local store where i spent 30 dollars now this is a local pawn shop i go in there once a week to see if these guys got anything new i've established a very good rapport with them they're very friendly. They hold stuff. They show me new stuff that isn't out on the floor yet. They make me deals. They haggle with me. They let me talk them down. And they've always hooked me up. Make friends with your local pawn shops. I'm telling you, it pays dividends. <laughs> uh, first game up, racing game, Burnout Revenge. This is a fantastic game. Uh, I'm not a huge race car fan enthusiast when it comes to racing games. But the Burnout series... The whole, like, smashing other cars into, like, the side rails and into stuff and watching them explode and fly through the air. To me, that is fantastic. It's it's what makes this game fun. It's very arcade feeling, you know, and Burnout Revenge, I think, is probably one of the best in the series of the Burnout games. It's not the last, um, but one of the best, in my opinion. Next up, Mafia, another third-person action game. But I've never played this. I've, I've always heard good things about it. They just real recently released a remaster of it. 
And I figured, what the hell? I love I love GTAs and things, um, so hard to go wrong with one that takes place in like bootlegging America and got to be a decent game. Next up, Kingdom Hearts, the only RPG I bought thus far. This is an action RPG running through like the Disney Pantheon. A very beloved game. I've never played it. I don't like turn-based JRPGs, so I'm, I'm pretty sure this is an action RPG. If it's turn-based, I'm gonna I'm gonna hurt myself. <laughs> but but I bought it anyway. CIB manual. Everything is in good shape in that game. It's just uh, I I really don't know whether it's a turn-based or <laughs> an action RPG. I'm hoping action. That's that's just what I'm gonna have to really bank on for that game. Next up, this thing from a company called Game Crazy, a used God of War. And the best thing about this God of War is when you open it, there's actually two Gods of War. So you got the greatest hits and the regular of the original God of War, which means I've got one to sell. The discs are both in decent shape. Obviously, it's not complete in box. God of War, an awesome hack and slash third person kind of action. You know, Kratos' first appearance all the way back on the PS2. I have this game, I've played this game, it doesn't control the greatest, but it is like a very important game to both its genre and the PS2 era generation of games. I just feel like it's something that needs to be in the collection, you know, it has to be there. Finally, last but not least, this little plastic loose GTA Vice City, which I didn't realize it when I bought it but actually has a game behind it for the PS1, Tiny Tanks. Never played Tiny Tanks, but it's another game I can sell, so happy to have gotten that. GTA Vice City, without a question, my favorite GTA game. Um, I've got GTA 3, Vice City, 4, 5. I had San Andreas, but I sold it because I honestly didn't care for San Andreas, and I haven't even played 4 and 5, but Vice City, the soundtrack, made this game. It was so much fun. It was so just mind-bogglingly cool, you know, in like 02, 03, 04, whenever the hell it came out, <laughs> early 2000s, man. I remember it was the first, I think, Jesus, it might have been the only game I actually owned for the PlayStation 2 when I bought it. Um, my wife and I had just moved out in the PS2. We, we justified it because it was also a DVD player. Just, I mean, that's how, you know, a ton of people justified the PS2. But GTA Vice City just screams of the era the importance that it is to everything so coming out of that budget 30 bucks more and 30 bucks for those games is a steal but again make friends with your pawn shops work with them get a repertoire with them you know get them to to like you respect you spend your money it's good stuff you'll get good stuff out of it it's it's well invested uh, but that brings our budget down to 85 dollars and then we go north. Uh, so this shop is 40 minutes north of me. And <laughs> my wife poked her head in there. Uh, I got three games from there. These are all CIB. Well, I take that back. Two of them are CIB. I spent 20 bucks there. Uh, first game, uh, Gran, Turismo, Gran Turismo A-Spec. This is another racing game in the Gran Turismo series. I think... This one kind of foregoes the 9,000 car choice, you know, that the Gran Turismo series is famous for. It's, you know, they always put like a million cars into these series. And what this one does instead of that, it, it's a much more limited selection of cars. But the graphics are better. The backgrounds look better. I think that the edges and everything, the polygons, it all looks much cleaner and just higher definition, I guess, if that's the way you want to put it. And so that's the Gran Turismo I chose to go for. It looks beautiful. It's it's not bad. I've always been a much more arcade drive race person. So a kart racer or like Burnout Revenge or San Francisco Rush or things like that. And so I'm much happier to do those kind of games. But Gran Turismo A-Spec isn't bad. And I'll be happy for that. Next up, Max Payne. I got him give me this one for five bucks. This is CIB. 
again, third person action adventure. We're talking again GTA style, GTA clone, whatever you want to call it. I mean, people love Max Payne. That used the <laughs> this was kind of the era of bullet time being introduced and things, and they used it in Max Payne. I've never actually played the series. But I've always heard it was really good, and they've made like three or four of the damn things, I do believe. So this was another one that was recommended to me by someone else who I talked to after putting the show out on Twitter. And yeah, I just thought, well, what the hell, for you know, five bucks, you can't go wrong with it, really. Final pickup from there, ten bucks. Ten bucks, it doesn't have slipcover. This is the only one that didn't have the manual or anything. It's Metal Gear Solid 2 Sustenance. Now, I have Metal Gear Solid 1. I've never played any of the others. But Metal Gear Solid 2, I know, was... I remember hearing that it was a good game, but that it was awful. Everyone got mad at it because it. I guess you played Solid Snake at the very beginning, and then very shortly therein, you took control of a different character for the rest of the game. Again, never played it, but third-person action stealth adventure game. I'm all for it. Again, this is one that was real popular of its era. And, you know, it's just another game that the PS2 was known for. I don't know if it was on any other system. It probably was. I don't even... It wouldn't surprise me if it got to Xbox. I remember that there was a Metal Gear release for the GameCube, the Twin Snakes. So it might have been on Xbox as well. That wouldn't shock me. But my guess is that PS2 is what it was best known for. And so with those spent, you know, another $20, we're down to a budget of 65 bucks. Finally, I went to a shop south of me. Now, this shop is about an hour and 10 minutes, which is why I don't go there very often. And when Family Video, they always bought tons of stock from Family Video when they would switch out systems and generations. And then especially when the company went under, finally, in like 2020, 21, right after the pandemic... Uh, they bought a ton of their stock. So they have shelves upon shelves of games. And that's awesome for us. They do have some really good stuff. The PS2 selection was kind of slim pickings, but I did pick up a couple games from there. I spent 20 bucks, bringing my budget down to 45 First up, Onimusha Warlords. Third person, again, third-person action game. This one I've never played. It was recommended to me by someone from... I think when I put the video up on my Facebook page, someone recommended this one to me. And looking at gameplay footage here, it feels a lot like a Resident Evil game just from this little bit of footage that I pulled out. Now, the case is dirty. It doesn't have the manual, but the disc's in good shape. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this one, actually. The, the kind of concept of, like, Resident Evil in Feudal Japan sounds kind of fun. And I, I don't know if it's any good, but we'll give that a try. I'm pretty excited about that one. I, I, again, some of these games I've never touched before. Uh, this one, I have, well, not this one, but the series, Medal of Honor Frontline. So there were a number of Medal of Honor games for the PlayStation 2. This one's CIB. I have played the Medal of Honor series for the PC. I remember very much playing a lot of it on the PC back in the early 2000s. And really, really enjoying it there. Will the controls hold up as well? Uh, I don't know. I've never played it on the PS2. In fact, I've never played a first-person shooter on the PS2, so I have Frontline and Black now to play. But it's World War II. You're killing Nazis. You know, it's it's really hard to go wrong with that theater of operation. It's just a matter of whether the controls function well or not. I don't know, but it looks great. It's, I mean, looks great. I think Black looks better. And will probably play better, is my guess. But the Medal of Honor series is pretty iconic for what it was at the time. I looked online, and a number of people said that Frontline was the best Medal of Honor, so that's why I went with Frontline. I don't know. You know, you got to make your own judgment on that. Hopefully it's good. <laughs> and then the final game I got, Super Monkey Ball Deluxe Party Game. I loved... I didn't love Monkey Ball, uh, because I never played it back in the day i didn't play my first monkey ball game until probably ooh, i played monkey ball on the ps vita like a month or two ago and i was like holy cow monkey ball is great this is super fun and so when i went in there and i saw that i knew monkey ball existed on the gamecube and i went in there and saw that it was also for the ps2 and i thought hell i gotta get monkey ball then 
So picked up Monkey Ball. Those games from the Southern Store, twenty bucks brings my budget down to forty five. It, it's hard to knock any of this stuff so far. I've got like fifteen or sixteen games at this stage. A couple FPS, a couple racers, plenty of third person action games, a stealth kind of action game. You know, uh, a party game, a three D platformer. I still have to find a bunch of stuff. I need to find, you know, Ratchet and & Clank and Jack and & Daxter. And I've got a number of other games on the list that were recommended to me. I don't see myself picking up Final Fantasy or anything because I don't like turn-based RPGs. Maybe I'll pick one up if I run across it, like, super cheap. I also don't have any idea which one is the best Final Fantasy on the PS2, so I'm sure if any of you want to throw that one out, chime in in the comments. Uh, or hit me up on Twitter or Facebook or wherever you follow me if you follow me. Speaking of follow me, follow me. Give me a like, share, subscribe. I appreciate you all. But with my budget down to $45, I am I'm coming down and I need to go up. So what worked out for me is I have a co-worker who had two original Game Boys. And you can see this one here that I put up is broken. I, I took the two Game Boys. Neither of them worked when he gave them to me. Took them home. Between the two of them, I cobbled one together working with a good screen. He asked what I wanted from him as far as a price. I said, well, how about you just give me the broken one because I know the broken ones still sell for decent cash and parts. Took it, put it on eBay for 50 bucks, sold it immediately almost, like four hours after I posted it. About $10 in shipping, so a gain of $45. Final budget, $85. Still in the green, technically. Doing great at 15 games and an $85 budget still. Plenty of money to spend. And... There's one more town to the northwest of me, about an hour and 20 minutes away. And it's the only one I haven't gone to between the first video and this video. Gonna try and get up there at some point. But my two big hopes right now are there's a video game convention in June, mid-June, about an hour and a half away. I'm gonna go to that. And then I have, I, I don't know if I said this last video, one of the things I said, wanted to say was, you know, like I said a number of times in this video, cultivate a relationship with your pawn shops. It's very important. They'll make you good deals. <laughs> the other is don't hesitate to put on your social media. Ask your family and friends. Does anybody have old video game stuff they want to sell? Because I asked a coworker, and she said, yeah, I've got a bunch of old video game stuff from when my kids were kids. And I said, oh, what do you got? And she said, well, I got an Xbox and a PS2 and an Xbox 360 and a bunch of games for it. And I said, that's awesome. I want those. What do you want for them? She said, don't worry about it. I'll just give them to you. Now, she hasn't. she's said she has to get it all out of her basement. And she hasn't gotten to it yet. And so I'm not. also I'm not going to push on her. Because if you're going to give me this stuff essentially for free, then I'm going to take it. Uh, I'm not just, I mean, I'm not going to take it for free. I'm, I'm not going to push her to be like, hey, go get that stuff for me. I will pay her. <laughs> I'm going to give her money. I don't know how much. It depends on what all she manages to dig out. But friends and family can be a great resource to bolster a collection and to also find stuff, you know, in, in this particular case. If she has PS2 stuff, great. It adds to my collection here. But if she has, like, Xbox and Xbox 360 stuff, I can turn around and resell it. You know, should I feel a little bad about that? Probably. <laughs> but, you know, I'm not going to let that, I'm not going to let myself do that because I am going to give her money for it. I'm not going to take it as freebie and then turn around and sell it for a bunch of money. But the point is that'll be a nice bolster to the budgetary finance and then also probably more games and maybe a second controller because currently I only have one controller and one memory card. Not that I need multiple memory cards. Uh, and it'd be amazing if she had like a four-player uh, four-player port hub. That'd be awesome. But another controller would be really nice, especially given Monkey Ball. And I'm very excited for that. So those are the two big hopes, three big hopes I got. I need to hit that store to the northwest. I need my coworker to come through for me, and then mid June we'll hit up that uh, video game convention north of me. But until then. I'm just going to continue to watch Facebook Marketplace like a hawk. I go through my local pawn shops. I have four shops in town. I go through those once a week, basically, to see if they ever come up with anything new. They don't a lot of times. But 
you know, they know me, uh, especially the one shop that I'm really, you know, decent friends with the guys that run it. You know, they'll hold stuff for me and, and tell me, hey, we had a guy bringing a bunch of stuff. I sat aside so you could get the first look at it. It can't be understated to make the effort to talk to those people, learn their names, uh, you know, make sure they know who you are and what you're looking for. And I mean, the only way to do that is to go in there constantly. So like I said, I go through my shops once a week and that's great. I did buy one other thing this month, but I'm not going to sell it because I, it was a Wii, it was a pile of Wii games and a Wii and my oldest son wants those. So I'm going to sell those to him, but that's it. That's update number one in the books coming into May. And hopefully I'll find something in May. Hopefully that coworker rolls up. But we'll see at the end of the month coming into June what we cut. And currently I think we're sitting real pretty for, you know, it, if you took my $85 and, and repaid the initial investment of my $100, i am down 15 bucks, And I've got a PS2 and a controller and like 16 good games, 15 games. Hard to be disappointed with that. But that's it, guys. Thank you very much for sticking with me. Again, questions, comments, suggestions for games, put it down below in the comments. Share it on Twitter. Do me solids. We'll see you guys next time. Peace out.